Mark. Welcome to another episode of Misty Bay. We're just going to pick it up where we left off. Just taking a quick look at our surroundings, getting a grasp for where we are. Yeah, I always get stuck looking at it. <laughs> it's always a nice view. It's good to remember what it looks like now in comparison to what it's going to look like soon. Yeah. So I was thinking we'd get some uh, warehouses on the back side of this train station we put in here earlier. Good to put a few uh, warehouses around here, cargo terminals. It helps with uh, distribution of goods. I find each one can only hold so many trucks or have so many trucks working for it. So having more uh, storage units than bigger ones is actually important. And having them spread out throughout your entire city, that way your distribution to your factories is very consistent. Because often, your unique factories aren't necessarily not getting enough of the resource, it's just that it's not getting there in a timely fashion. And that's because a truck has to travel from such a great distance to bring it to them. Um, so it's important, very important, to keep your distribution chain strong yeah real simple nothing crazy here today nothing crazy we keep it real simple because we don't like to stress because we don't come to this game to stress we come to this game to relax and get what we're looking for Absolutely no stress here. No reason to. Absolutely no reason to stress. No reason. So maybe we'll get a few buses going here now. Yeah, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll get a bus depot in here and... Get a few buses going. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. <laughs> Guess that we don't do crazy around here. So I think we'll first just create a connection uh, bus here between on the Watu and Riverton. Just connecting up some of the key key destinations. All these things are subject to change down the road as the town evolves. We don't know. Well, I shouldn't say you don't. We don't know. We don't know. We never know. Everything can change. Put a couple stops in here at this shopping district. There really isn't too many destinations on this side of the road we want to stop at. There we go. Put a couple stops here through on the Watu. Nothing crazy. Nothing over the top. We just want to connect the two neighborhoods so they have an alternate route other than train or car. Unlike the train, see, so when people get off the train, they have to either walk or find a, another transportation method to get to where they're looking for. Uh, 
Because the train doesn't get you to a specific destination. It just gets you to a general area. So buses are a more of a point-to-point -point, uh, transportation unit system. And so uh, you'll find that, yes, even though this bus line mirrors the train line, they'll both get equal usage. Well, I shouldn't say equal, but the train's not going to be hurt by having this having this uh, bus line mirror it. And actually, they might strengthen each other at the end of the day. It, it, it will take a lot of cars off the road anyways, and that's the important part. That's the important part. <clears throat> so we got our first first bus line in there, and I think that worked out good. I think that worked out good for now. We're not getting stressed about it. We're just trying to get, get the general connections in here. And uh, while we're at it, we might as well bring this up close to this train station so that people can transfer off of it. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I'm not going to need a whole bunch of buses on this route quite yet. 23 is probably a bit excessive. I mean, it's... who knows? Who knows how busy this is actually going to be until we know. I'll likely have to go and get a few different models of buses that can hold a higher capacity. And that's fine. That's fine. And we're probably going to have to rework this whole train, uh, sorry, uh, bus network in the future. And we'll worry about that when that happens. But right now, we're just focused on just a few little things. Another reason why I built these side roads like this, it's so we can offload the buses onto them instead of using the main street. Because... Uh, when you get buses stopping on the main street, you're going to have through traffic be backed up, and we don't want to do that. Little things we remind ourselves. There's just there's the way I do things. There's no right way. Remember this. There's, there's no right way. Just the way I like to do it. So I think we'll get another couple train uh, bus networks going here. I really want to call them trains. Uh, just to uh, just a few loops. As well. Yeah. There we go. I'm just going to bring this down all the way so that when we bring our loops in for uh, this city here, there's going to be places for them to meet up and transfer onto this main route. I think uh, in the future we'll probably make a downtown loop and then two side loops and then a connecting bus. Right now we've got it all in one. And that'll service us until probably about 70, 80,000 people before it gets too crazy. And I'm no bus expert. I really, I'm not. Um, probably my weaker spot, but that's fine. That's fine. We don't, we don't let that stress us out at all. No reason for it. Absolutely no reason for it. I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm trying out a new way of doing buses in this, uh, this series. I've, uh, I've tried many different ways and. Still something I'm learning, so hopefully this way works out best for us. And uh, we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> and this is what a lot of cities are too, eh? There's a lot of experimenting happening in cities. Because there is no right way with even cities being built in, in real life. There's, there's no right way. That's, 
There's just the way you want to build it. So, uh, so you can look in real cities as an example, and you can see all the experimenting that each city is doing to figure out how to meet the demands of their city and if they can improve on already existing ideas. So we're starting our, our, our first loop here that's going to uh, service this half of the, the city, or the downtown section anyways. All subject to change in the future. This is just what's going to happen right now. We're putting this in roughly just to get an idea. Roads are going to change. Demand's going to change. So we're not going to let it stress us out right now. No stress. Absolutely no, no stress. No reason for it. This isn't a big loop. Nothing crazy. Just a simple little bus loop to get some people around. And there's opportunities to transfer onto the main line there, running through the city. No stress. Absolutely no stress. So we're going to get our other loop here on the other half of the downtown, old town, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be a bit of a larger loop, and that's expected. This is a larger side, <laughs> and uh, that's fine. No stress. Things will work out. As I'm planning this now, I already see things I want to do in the future to change this and make it more functional. But right now, that's not our concern. We'll keep those little thoughts in our head to remind ourselves, and uh, this will all work out at the end. No stress. Easy, easy, easy. So we're just going to link these up in the middle here on this side road as a transfer spot. There's a couple of transfer spots, so this works out good. Yeah, just like this. We're not going to get too crazy. Not too crazy. So I think we'll get a loop here and on the Watu as well. There's nothing crazy here either. It's it's going to mirror probably a bit of the uh, inner 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 city one, but that's okay. It'd be a bit tricky getting these two uh, these buses to go the right way, and it can get you. It can be quite stressful. But as usual, we don't let it stress us out because we don't come here to stress. We come here to build a city, town, and get uh, get what we want. Make it look the way we want it. And that's, that's really what we're here for, to get the results we're looking for without stressing about it. Yeah. You don't want them too close together, but you don't want them too far apart either. So it's finding the balance between between the two. We've already got this station here, so we might as well just link them up. And here we're going to get a bit of mirroring happening. That's, that's normal. This is actually a really strong uh, way of making your buses. And this is already some of the ideas I have for Riverton. We're going to get some loops like this that are overlapping each other. And uh, hopefully that'll make it efficient. And we'll just cut the loop here. And there we go. No stress. Really easy. Simple, simple. 
Now these are going to have loads of tr tr buses on them, and we don't we don't need that many buses here yet. We don't actually know how many buses these are each going to take, so we're going to cut them down to their most minimal funding. Most minimal. And we'll let them build up, and then we'll figure out what bus routes are going to need what. Let the game tell us what we need. Let the game tell us what we need. It'll tell us what we need. We don't have to stress about trying to figure out what we need to do. The game just says, this is what we want. This is what you build. And so that's what we do. We need the crematoriums. We really do. We're close. We're very close to getting them. And this will take some of the pressure off of our cemeteries that we're having. We have quite a bit of residential demand. Probably be good to fill it. Probably be good to fill it. So we'll clear out some space here. The developers come in and bought some land. Bought this whole block. The city says we need to, uh, we need some apartments. We've got demand. So they've rezoned this area. We're going to imagine that the homeowners have slowly sold off to the developer over a period of time and we're not worried about it being crazy but it's a story that you have in the back of your mind to remind yourself of, of how the hounds work and how things work so that you have a little idea of how to develop things just trying to figure out what kind of buildings we want to put in here I want them older looking, with a little bit of height, a little bit higher than these street homes. Mm, I don't know. Kind of wanted to put something a little denser here, a little taller, but... Maybe we'll just put another block of homes in here, like this. And, uh, I mean, there's a few different ways you could do this. You could, you could set these up, but I'm just doing it in a simple way. You know, in a consistent way, so that the city, or town rather, uh, has a very consistent look. know what to expect yeah just slowly gonna densify Riverton nothing too crazy just simple just simple so we've just three are like 10 times the amount of people in that block because there was what eight homes 10 homes with one family in each and now there's uh 10 homes or 20 homes there with 30 i mean three people each so you do the math on that one <coughs> households i guess rather so we'll get another subdivision, I think, back here, and we're going to create a few little access roads for different things here. This will be an interesting little subdivision, gated community, whatever you want to call it. A little interesting subdivision back here. <coughs> things are looking good, though. We don't stress. <laughs> Absolutely no stress. I have to remind you of this. I really do. It's important. If you stress while you're playing this game... You're not going to have fun. And when you're not having fun, you don't want to play. So, let's have some fun. Let's get what we want. Let's get what we want. Absolutely no stress. No stress. It is a really simple game. 
it can be intimidating. There's a lot of things you have to you have to look at, but and understand, I guess. But the game is really simple. The game tells you what it wants, and you just feed it. You feed it. You literally feed it what it wants. As long as you set yourself a few little rules. Now, I have my own rules, and they're they're not the rules, the only rules. This is just the way I, I play in order to get the results I'm looking for. And and that's the key I find. Finding the the way you want to play. Finding out the, the set of rules that you're going to follow to get the look you're going for. As I said, this is just the rules and the way I play to, to get the results I'm looking for. There are no right ways. There's no rules. The game has no rules built in. The game is... Got basically, I shouldn't say no rules, but there's almost no rules in this game. You can do whatever you want. And this is where you've got to set up your own little rules and figure out how you're going to go about building your city. And so, come up with a story and a reason for things. Little rules as to why the city did this and the town did that. Nothing crazy. But all these little things help your town, your city, become real, become natural. That's the important thing I find. I really want a natural looking city. Nothing has been pre-planned too crazily in the, from the future, into the future, sorry, rather. Something that's just organically formed over time based on need of the community. You have a very limited space and a lot of things that need to be fit into a very limited space. So there's only really one or two ways these things are going to get fit in here. And depending on the tiles you buy will change the way that your starting cities are, are forming. The way that we've bought our starting tiles here is really limited Riverton into a very, very specific pattern of development. You can only put buildings beside each other, certain buildings beside each other. You can only put certain developments beside each other. So this really limits what you can actually do if you're going to follow these zoning rules you're going to set up for yourself. At the end of the day, the game doesn't care what you do, as long as you meet the demands of the citizens and the buildings. So you can do whatever you want. You can really do whatever you want in this game. I play with the uh, real population mod, and I think it's very important to this style of how a lot of people are now playing, since the way that the base game vanilla is really limits the population and city growth. You kind of get almost a characterized city rather than a more realism city. And I've said this before, I'm not, uh, I'm not going for ultra-realistic here. I've got a, I'm looking for a balance between game functionality and realism. So there are things that are built into the game that force you to play in a specific way and, and build things in a specific way in order for them to function properly. And unfortunately, that's just the way things are, or fortunately, however you want to look at it. It's not a disadvantage, but it's just the way things are. And so, you're going to see how I, do, I handle traffic, and people are going to say, well, why don't you let them merge and do all these other things? Because the, And I'm going to say, well, because the game can't handle it. The game doesn't know how to handle merging traffic properly and letting them lane switch and stuff. So, in a lot of spots, you just have to constrict their lane switching. And that's just the way the game has to be in order for it to function properly. It's too hard for the computer to program lane switching in. It just it would take too much on the computer, on people's computers. And that's fine. We'll work with it. We have an idea. We know that. We know that. So knowing that, 
we're just going to work with it and make the game do what we want to get the results we're looking for. That's all it's about. That's all it's about. And we, we're, we're going to work ourselves into a bit of a puzzle here we're going to have to solve. And, uh, and that's the fun of this game. Is because of the way you develop your cities. Each city is unique. So unique. And each challenge is a unique challenge that you're going to have to figure out for yourself. There are similarities between cities and towns. and You might find s the same problems in some towns. and They might have a universal fix, but there's going to be some really unique things with each city. And that's the fun. Figuring out how to handle those unique issues. And that's what makes your city, your, your city, unique, different, nothing that anybody else has seen before. These unique challenges and things you have to build just for this city in order to make it function. Form and function are key. Neither can exist without the other. And when you try to do one more than the other, that's when you run into problems. Something can function very well, but if it doesn't uh, look safe or look like it does function well, then it's uh, not going to get used. Just a thought. Could be wrong. Who knows? I say a lot of things. I say a lot of things. So we're going to get a, I think, a little commercial development in here of some sort. I'm not sure yet at this point what we're going to do, but uh, I know I do want some commercial development in here. Larger, larger than just uh, spawned in from zoning. This is going to be plopped, plopped in buildings that are much larger, much larger. So we'll see, we'll see. Nothing crazy. We're going to put a parking lot in here first, so we're going to figure out how we're going to get that in here. This is one of my favorite tools in the game. These parking, parking lot roads. Big parking lot roads. They really can make uh, or break a city. I've learned a few new techniques, uh, I'm not going to showcase them in this episode, but I've learned a few new techniques about these things and how you can use them. And some people might go, well, that, it looks a little chunky, but hey, every city has its... not perfect. Every city's not perfect. There's no perfection in a city. And that's one of the things I'm striving for. I don't want a perfect city. That's one of those realism things. As long as it's functional in the game, and the game is able to function without the city falling apart, that's all I find that's important. Because no city is perfect. It's unrealistic to have a perfect city. So, having these little flaws is just another character of the city. That's why there's no such thing as mistakes. No such thing as mistakes. Only happy accidents. Because every mistake turns into something that will build your city's uniqueness. There's no wrong here. There's no wrong. I can't stress that enough. There's absolutely nothing wrong. No wrong way to build this. No wrong way. Just got to fiddle this in here. There we go. Doesn't seem to want to connect up uh, properly here, but... We're not stressed about that. So I probably should have done this to begin with. And then drawn these in here in the center. But hey. Hey, we don't stress. We just. We're just here to have fun and relax. Build a city. Get the look we're going for. And there's nothing crazy here. 
nothing crazy. Just building a quick little parking lot. It'd be nice if every road would connect that way that that one just did, but that's uh, that's a dream world. Yeah, we're not going to get that S-bend again so perfectly like the first one. That's fine. We'll make a compromise here. Just like this. We have to compromise to get what we want. Can't make the game do something it's not capable of doing. And this is what I keep saying. We're building a city that's part functionality, part realism. We can't, we can't force it to be what it can't be. Without a lot of mods. And the more mods you add to the game, the more unstable your, your cities and towns become. And we don't want an unstable city. We want to be able to play this for the long term. We're really just using mods and assets that... Help us, that help us get through this. Make it easy, the game easier. We don't want to add too many mods and break the city. So we're making this compromise between realism and functionality, like I say. I guess we'll just probably leave these parking spaces the way they are. Leave this space empty. Fill it in with concrete later. We're not going to let it bother us. not going to let it stress us out. Because that's not what we want. We don't get what we want when we're stressed out. We don't get the city we're looking for when we're stressed out. It doesn't work out for anybody when we're stressed out. Dropped my mouse. Oh, the joys of working on a laptop. There we go. All right. So like I said, we're going to plop these buildings in. We're looking for some larger commercial zones. Larger footing with larger footprints, sorry. Probably be good to get a hotel in here or two. Makes sense in my opinion. This would be a very touristy destination. And like I said, on the Watu started out as a hotel resident, uh, as a hotel or a motel or whatever you want to call them, uh, town. Thus the name on the way to. I've also said that it could be based off of a native reserve, and it, it just might be. So we might do that down the road and build a native reserve near on the Watu. It was named after on the way to, and people would stay here on the way to Riverton. So it makes sense to add in these, add in these little hotels, motels, and we're going to add a few more around. I've got quite a few downloaded, so we'll see where that takes us. We'll see where that takes us. We're not really focused on tourism, really, uh, at this moment. A lot of these towns are industry towns still. They're, they haven't hit their peak yet. So we're not, not too stressed about these things yet, building tourist traps and stuff, but there will come a time for that. And there'll be redevelopment that will happen when that happens. Just another fun project for down the road. So 
always good to get a Tim Hortons in. They're literally on every corner in Canadian cities and towns. I'm not really in support of Tim Hortons these days, but uh, I don't drink their coffee anymore. I don't actually buy any takeout these days anymore. I'm uh, boycotting them all. But uh, that's another topic for another day we don't discuss here. We don't discuss that here. Just looking for a few more buildings to fill in these spaces. Just trying to think of businesses that would complement having a hotel here. These businesses will work together. Not necessarily literally work together, but people would naturally look for these kind of businesses when they stay at the hotel, and the hotel would naturally look on the, 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 the customers going to these stores or likely people going to the hotels. So make it easy. Banks and restaurants. Quick access convenience stores. Stuff like that. Nothing crazy, nothing too crazy. We don't stress, we absolutely don't stress here. There's no reason for it. There's no reason for it. Stressing out gets nobody anywhere. Absolutely nobody anywhere. Like I said, this is just the way I do things to get to get the city the way I want it. There's no right way. There's absolutely no right way. I can't stress that enough. I just had to let my dog out there. He was stressing to go outside. So we're going to fudge around these buildings real quick. Get them to sit in here a little better. And then we're going to fill in the rest of this with pavement. Like I said... When we were building the parking lot. The 
concrete doesn't like interacting with the dirt, but that's that's okay. We don't let that stress us out. There's no reason for it. I love to say that it's a very good line. No stress. Absolutely no stress. Big cement shopping center with a travel lodge in it. There we go. Real simple. Get this little blue line there, but that's not a problem. We'll fix that later down the road. No pun intended. Guess we just need a little bit of water here. I always forget to do that when I'm making a new development. I always forget to add the water first. But look at this view. Look at that view. And this water is not connected either. So we'll quickly connect that. I must have forgot to do that. All right, no big deal. No big deal. Can't let these little things bother you. No reason for it. Farmland's coming good together. I think we'll just quickly put this water in here, and then we might call it a day. Yeah, we'll just quickly get this water in here. And I think we'll call that a day. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So as always, until next time, have a good one. Bye.